So I was just in New York, and of course I went to the Metropolitan Museum of Art, where they just opened an incredible exhibition which they titled Golden Kingdoms. Which they've collected art of the New World. It's basically the Americas, and they're calling it luxury arts in the Americas, but it's sort of an excuse just to bring together a lot of rather amazing pre-Columbian things. The Met's collection is very strong in Peruvian gold, and one of the first pieces in the exhibition is an amazing mouth mask. It's called a mouth mask, with just feline monster's face on it. And this image of the monster mask, or the sort of feline, snarling feline, reminded me of my time in Mexico when I went to Uxmal. And Uxmal is covered in monster masks. Uxmal is in the Yucatan, it's in the Puc region, and is one of the more important and beautiful of the Mayan cities. It, it's sort of late classic, so it's anywhere from about 800 to 1000 AD with its height in the nunnery courtyard. On the center of the facade of the East Building is what they call stacked god masks, which are in essence one monster mask on top of the other. And I define monster masks by, you know, these sort of snarling fanged mouth and large eyes, and it's deliberately scary and based upon nature. And, you know, in Uxmal and various other Mayan sites of the classic period, anywhere, you know, like 800 to 1000 AD, even the top of the pyramid of the dwarf in Uxmal is in the form of a huge monster mask around the doorway. And monster masks within that monster mask, as if that wasn't enough. But all of this reminds me, and not just me, because Cova Rubius noted the, the similarity, and Cova Rubius was a very important early pioneering scholar of the pre-Columbian art, and also an artist in his own right. Um, the relationship between Chinese, the Tao Te mask, and the pre-Columbian art. And the Tao Te mask is one of the basic motifs of archaic Chinese art, in its essence, a feline monster mask sometimes with horns, but always with these feline characteristics, i.e. fangs and large, fierce eyes. If you look at this Chinese Shang Dynasty vessel, it looks like one of the Mayan god masks, or the Peruvian mouth mask. And the dot, you know, you can see how it's basically a stylized representation of the entire beast. And that's true in Mesoamerica, in the New World as well. Now, in my own small collection, I have a number of archaic Chinese pieces with the Tao Te mask. Of course, I bought them for that reason. And including this small bronze buckle, which is Western Zhou Dynasty, so it's like somewhere around 1000 or 1200 BC. And, you know, again, the prominent eyes and the fangs and the sort of heavy brow. And then there's one of my favorite pieces is this jade ornament in the form of a Tao Te mask, and it's a beautiful example of it. And I have two Warren States periods. It's a plaque with a very intricately detailed um, decoration, which you can perceive at the bottom of it is a monster mask with the large eyes and the snarling mouth. And another object that is the same period and similar decoration is a Kong, which is a four-sided squared cylinder with a monster mask on each side. And it probably started out as a Neolithic piece that was repurposed in the Warren States period, which is somewhere around four to 600 BC. But all of these relate or spring from our reverence and fear of the actual animals. In Asia, it would have been the tiger. In the Americas, the jaguar. Both of whom are quite capable of killing humans, one of the few animals in the wild that can. And they were reverenced not only for their power, and you know, you would use, the image was used as an apotropaic device to keep harm away. So when you have the monster masks on top of a doorway,
It's to keep evil away. It also represents the power of the god that the temple's meant to honor. And if you wear it on yourself, it's also stating your own power. It's like you're appropriating the power of the beast for yourself. You're also projecting that power outwards, protecting yourself. So it's a very, uh, it's interesting to see this commonality between two very far-flung places, but there's definitely a relationship.